الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه اللهم صلي وسلم وبارك على سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا وقرة أعيننا ومولانا محمد صلوات ربي وسلامه عليك سيدي وحبيبي وشفيعي يا رسول الله يا أبا القاسم وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا مولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ثم ما بعد Respected elders and my dear brothers and sisters, those who will be listening uh, later on on YouTube and also through Mixler. I praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I thank him for choosing us to be in his house on a very special day known as Yawm al Jumu'ah. So all of us say Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Allah is going to be in Farsi, 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 we send unlimited salams and salutations to the greatest messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except Allah. He is one and he has no partners. And we bear witness that the noble messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the final messenger and slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, we... In Islam, we are so fortunate to be part and member of a religion which promotes education, knowledge immensely. There's so much importance of ilm in this religion. Without ilm, nothing will be valid. And therefore, Imam al-Ghazali, rahimahullah, a great mujaddid and reformer of the 5th century of Arabic calendar, Hijri calendar, Imam Abu Hamid al-Ghazali, he said, Al-ilmu bila amalin kal junoon. Knowledge without, knowledge without practice is madness. Knowledge without practice is a madness. Imam al-Ghazali, rahimahullah, said, Al-ilmu bila amalin kal junoon. Afnal ilima se amol nai, Imam Ghazali, rahimahullah, khani dayak dronair, faglami. And then he said, وَالْعَمَلُ بِلَا عِلْمٍ لَا يَكُونَ And practice without knowledge is also invalid. Practice without knowledge, you will make mistake. You will worship, you will pray salah, you will make fast, you will perform pilgrimage, but there are errors and mistakes. And as a result, your ibadah may not be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore, they both come side by side. Imam al-Ghazali was right when he said al-ilmu bila amalin kal junoon knowledge without practice is a madness and practice without knowledge is, um, is, is just invalid. So this religion promotes education and ilm and knowledge so much to the degree that the first verse which is revealed in the glorious Quran al-Kareem was a verse about about can someone answer? What was the first verse to be revealed in, the, revealed in the Noble Quran, what was he about? Knowledge. Come on, all of us, mashallah, educate. Knowledge. It's about knowledge, reading. So it wasn't actually Surah Al Fatiha, wasn't the first chapter to be revealed in the Noble Quran. Rather, it was Surah Iqra or verses in Surah Iqra. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Iqra to Noble Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. First time when he met him, when he met Angel Jibreel. Jibreel Amin alayhi salam, when he came with the revelation in Wahi, the first thing was, was, was taught was to read. Because without knowledge, nothing will be right. And therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the first verse to Muhammad salawatu rabbi wa salamu alayhi, saying, O oh Muhammad, iqra, read, but read in the name of your Lord. Bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. So when you come to learn and educate yourself, if it's not guided, and if it's not, uh, you know, in line with the revelation, al-wahi, then soon we'll be misguided. Because knowledge can also misguide us. It can take us to the wrong path. How many people disbelieve in Allah because, of their, because they're too educated? They've learned so much, achieved so much qualifications and degrees that they, they reach to the stage where they disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So knowledge without 
the instruction and without the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would be just a misguidance. So therefore Allah said in the Quran, Iqra, read in the name of your Lord. Um, then, Bismi Rabbik, in the name of your Lord. So Lord, it's just a reminder to yourself that Allah is your Lord, that he did everything for you. From day one, even before you were born, came to the world, Allah did everything for you. He looked after you, took care of you in your mother's womb. And when you came out, you did, he did everything. This is the meaning of Rabb, the Lordship, Rububiyya. Rububiyya, Rabb is someone who takes care of you all the way through and is there for you. This is the reason why uh, mother is, in Arabic is, is known as Rabba Tubayt. Rabba Tubayt, just this mother, like housewife mother. Is in Arabic, Rabba Tubayt, because she tends to uh, take care of the children much more than anyone else, which is a fact. So, read in the name of your Lord, Allahi Khalaq, the one who created you. Because we cannot forget our Creator. The man's mistake, human being's mistake, is that they forget Allah, the Creator, when they come to the web of the dunya, web of this world, the zakharafat in dunya, the beauty and enjoyment. These are all deception, temporary. Money that you have is temporary. The life that you have, temporary. The husband or wife you have is temporary. Children you have, temporary. Just for a while. It's just a temporary station you're in. A dunya mamar, as the Arabs say. The dunya, well, it's just a passage. وَلَيْسَ maqar. It's not the destination. It's not the ultimate abode. Rather, we are all heading towards another world. And that's the akhara, the ultimate and the final world, final, final place for everybody. So, every one of us should be reminded that our Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is everything. So, therefore, Allah said, read in the name of your Lord, the one who created you. Alladhi khalaq. Khalaq al-insana min alaq. And the one who created you from also khalaq al-insan. He created the man, human beings, from a clot of blood. Nothing. This is our origin. Some of us, we are so proud, so much arrogance, just because we have a bit of strength, a bit of money, muscle, bodybuilder. For a while, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he takes us to stages. Uh, uh, you know, he khalaqkum min da'af. That he created us from the weakness. Thumma, uh, uh, you know, khalaqkum min da'af. And then after the weakness, he takes us to strength. And then from strength, then again, weakness and to the old age. Again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's telling us in the Noble Quran that those who know, قُلْ هَلْ يَسْتَوِ الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Those who know and those who don't know, can they be equal? Like, could you consider the people of knowledge and people of without knowledge are to be equal people? Of course not. And Allah gave a special degree, special status to the people of knowledge, ilm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave that status and therefore he said, say those who know and those who don't know, can they be equal? Zara zanoin, ar zara zanoin na taraki shaman. Allah rabbal alamin quran shaman za khoin. Zara knowledge as ilim as zara ilim nai. Taraki shaman uitu farbo, can they be equal? The answer is no. Uttarologi, obashay shambab nai. And so again, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Masjid Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said, the people of knowledge are the chosen ones. مَنْ يُرِيدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يُفَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينِ Those who are, are given the knowledge, the fiqh. The fiqh means deeper understanding of religion. Something you may understand like, you know, just from, from outside. It's faham in Arabic, like understanding. But fiqh is, is deeper meaning, deeper understanding. So those who are given that knowledge of understanding the book of Allah and Sunnah Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they also include, by the way, the worldly knowledge. Because Muslims in the early stage, they didn't differentiate between the knowledge of wahi and knowledge of the dunya, the, the world. And therefore, um, always they side by side studied. But of course, knowledge of wahi has a special degree. It, it has more virtue because it's, it's knowledge of Allah. The best knowledge in this world is the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one can disagree. And to know about Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we have to go through the instructions and teachings. So best knowledge is best 
is in this world is, is the knowledge about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as a result, you see early Muslim educationalists, those who were founders and masters and inventors and scientists and mathematicians in Islamic history, Muslims, they started with, every one of them started with Quran. Every one of them memorized the noble Quran. They began the journey of knowledge with Quran. Till today you find uh, prestigious universities like Al-Azhar, they have uh, in syllabus, every student, uh, they have to memorize the Quran. If they're Egyptians, if they're Arabs. For non-Arabs, they're reduced down to a little bit like less because of course many non-Arabs may struggle. But for Arabs mainly, they still have the syllabus that you have to memorize the Quran, no matter which kulia, which faculty you're in. You may be in faculty of t t uh, business, uh, science, dentistry, you may be in faculty of um, psychology or Arabic language or English or even Chinese language. You might be studying anything, but um, you have to begin with the Noble Quran. So Quran is a part of the syllabus of every faculty. And that shows, this is just an indication that how early Muslims, they took the knowledge of Quran and Sunnah of Prophet very seriously. But of course, later on, after the decline of the Muslim empires and after the colonization, the education, like this, something has become like Islamic knowledge and non-Islamic knowledge. People of like madrasa and people of like school, like mullahs, non-mullahs, shuyukhs, non-shuyukhs. But in the past, like they combined mostly. But yes, you have to have specialists, undoubtedly. No, like not everyone can become everything. We have to understand, accept the fact. A scientist can, cannot be like a, a sheikh sometime. I mean, there are some individuals very rarely that they can combine, but not everyone is able to do that. But those who have knowledge of Islam, they should have knowledge of dunya, the basics. And those who don't have the knowledge of dunya, the world, they must have also knowledge of Islam, at least the basics, fundamentals. And therefore, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, طَلَبُ الْعِلْمِ فَرِيضَ عَلَى كُلِّ مُسْلِمٍ وَمُسْلِمًا Seeking knowledge is an obligation upon every Muslim man and women. That's how much you know, uh, importance has been given. And then also Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in another statement, Hadith, الْحِكْمَةُ ضَالَّةُ الْمُؤْمِنِ Wisdom is a lost property of a believer. Wisdom is a lost property. Wisdom, knowledge. Hikmah, it's a lost property. Wherever they find, they get it. They go and pick it up. It could be with non-Muslim, it could be with Christians, it could be Jewish, it could be with uh, people of any, any, you know, uh, people of different sects. So long it's correct and good, beneficial, we learn and we achieve. So al-hikmah tudallat al-mu'min. And we saw how Muslim, uh, you know, history really flourished when they ruled the world and when they mastered the education. Uh, I'm sure many of you know, I don't have to go through the details, but if you look at some of the historians, Muslims like very, uh, uh, you know, uh, giants, like Al Khawarizmi, for example, he was a renowned mathematician, astronomer, and geometer. Of course, in 790, people like Ibn, Ibn Al Haytham was also a physicist, a mathematician, astronomer, Al Biruni, Al, uh, Al Zahrawi, Ibn Sina, Ibn Nafis, all these, if you look at, if you, get, if you have a chance, look at these great giants, like they actually, not only just they were like, they were unique at that time, like there was no one above them. And they are like, they are the ultimate source and authority in science, in mathematics, even of the Western world today. But Muslims don't know, we, we, sometimes we don't know these facts. These are early Muslims, and they were religious people. They're not like, you know, anti-Islamic Muslims, but don't like Islam. There are Muslims don't like Islam. Because Muslims Muslim are not Islam, they don't like Islam. No, I guess that's not Muslim and a Dharmic Muslim. At the same time, they invented all this stuff. And if you look, if you really travel to the Muslim world, just traveling to the early, so for example, ancient Muslim world, like for example, Syria, Egypt, uh, Turkey, Morocco, uh, if you go to those parts, even for example, to India, then you see what Muslims did. Taj Mahal, for example. Who built Taj Mahal? Muslims, one of the seven, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, curious, amazing things in, in the world. Muslims, uh, Muslims made. Look at the monuments in Turkey. Look at the monuments in Egypt. The Muslims, how they built art. They were so artistic that people today go and just check and look. Even the non-Muslims are amazed by this, 
work of the early Muslims like centuries ago. How did they, these are, these are Muslims, they've done it. Beauty was taken seriously, art was taken seriously. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is beautiful and he loves beauty. And therefore people go and some of us we think, oh, we just that uh, Muslim, you have to be like scruffy and untidy and all these things. No, within the, 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 the beauty is what Allah and his messenger said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Beauty is not what you think is beautiful, by the way, in Islam. From an Islamic perspective, beauty is not what you think. It's what Allah and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said. That's the original beauty. Otherwise, anything can look beauty to you, beautiful to you. Haram, halal, and look how, what people are doing today. You know, they do whatever they like. Even they're going against the, the fitra, changing the genders, you know, colors and all this stuff. And then the thing is good and it's beautiful because there is no guidance. There is no instruction. So, um, inshallah, ultimately, knowledge is everything. And we all should take knowledge seriously, inshallah. Study. Let's like stop wasting our time on things that don't benefit us. I'm like, so hikar chistakhori potidin. Hikar kuna sheshnai. There's no ending. There's no uh, end to learning. We can learn in so many ways. I'm like, for us, I'm for you, I'm for you, I'm for you, I'm for you. If we don't know how to read, then we can, lead, we can listen. We can, there are a lot of talks and lectures nowadays, alhamdulillah, available. But good scholars, listen to them. We should go and sit in the, uh, the gatherings of, of, of knowledge. But we don't do that today. All of us, we think, many of us, we think that we are knowledgeable. We have, oh, I know everything. Why do I have to learn? So we still have to learn a lot, even every one of us. Wallahi. Because, for example, when I, when I sometimes go to the people like, you know, like big university like Al Azhar, Medina, and other Islamic universities, I feel like I'm just, uh, I don't know anything. I feel like I, I, I don't know really anything. You know, in comparison with these scholars that we have, they know like they studied so much, years and years. And so, therefore, all of us must promote, you know, inshallah, and, 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 uh, encourage ourselves and also our children. Let's put them in the best education. Successful communities in this country are the most educated people. They have doctors, they have scientists, they have engineers, they have professors. But we think GCSE was finished, alhamdulillah, good, it's enough. How can this be? Minimum graduation, then master, then PhD. Inshallah, let's help our children. We can invest so much money in here and there. We can't do that. But inshallah, if you do this, this is going to be the best investment. But don't forget, if you don't give Islam to them, then this can also misguide. So every knowledge, inshallah, led by and, and inspired by the knowledge of Islam first, Quran, Sunnah, <coughs> fundamentals, and then they can do whatever they like with, the, with keeping and by keeping their identity as a Muslim.